what really happened there in Hanukkah? What was the big fight, the big debate there? Hi, my name is Chaim, and let's try to explain this a bit deeper to understand what happened there in Hanukkah. Since the time of the philosopher Immanuel Kant in the 17th century, we understand that we don't have a clear, deep, and I'll say lucid connection with the phenomena that are external to us and our comprehension of those events. When we look uh, out of the window and see buildings, roads, cars driving, and even few trees, we don't really know anything about those things. What we can understand is how we feel about each thing that we see. Are we doomed to uh, eternally remain uncertain? To lack deep, significant contact with the world around us? Not exactly. Let me explain. Let's take as an example the wondrous device that is usually found in every person's pocket today. Only five, six years ago it started. Scientists were able to control the forces of nature and create a new reality that we didn't even notice was changing the world before our eyes. Every person has access to all of the information that exists in the world and this access crosses countries and uh, continents. The masses have almost as much power as the central government and perhaps even more as we witnessed uh, in the, or say, in the, our countries uh, with everything that happened there. For this control of natural forces, humankind owns its thanks to the ancient culture of Greece, the culture that developed the language of the scientists, especially the mathematical language, which is the basis of all physical science. While mathematics began I would say, to develop long before the philosopher in Greece, they were the ones who gave this language its effectiveness to the extent that men can use it to control nature, reach the moon, gather all the information and send it to, in a small tiny messages to every corner in the earth. Let's not get confused here. This is also the Creator's will. It says like that, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and conquer it as Adam was commanded at the very beginning of the Bible. The Creator expect us, the human spices, to conquer and control our world. It's possible to say that through practical, physical, fixed sciences that equip men with tools to fully control the physical side of the nature, those phenomena that are not personal, the dream of controlling this world is gradually becoming reality. Mark Zuckerberg can proudly announce that he invents uh, that he invests billions of dollars in researching, manufacturing, and distributing life-saving medications. And it doesn't even sound abnormal. Of course, of course, we must utilize this control for good. But wait, what does that have to do with good or bad? Does this attitude necessarily lead to good? Just a moment. In contrast with the first task, the attempt to achieve complete control of the world of exact phenomena, which utilized exact science to play with the forces of nature according to man's will, we, the human spices, have another task to deal with values, ethics, and the human spirit. It's possible to be precise and claim that the language of mathematics is the language of quantity, exact measurements and calculations. The scientific world and the univers universities specialize in those areas. However, parallel to this, there is a different language, a language connected to quality and not to quantity, a language that deals with values in general and with people in particular. An internal contradiction exists 
within man due to the fact that he is human. He is in two worlds simultaneously. In terms of his body, man is in the fixed deterministic world of external phenomena, in a world of total determinism. A quick visit to hospital shows us the human body and how it functions. True, we've already explained this part and we've seen how we are slowly learning how to deal with it, various, uh, I will say, elements. This task of understanding nature has almost been accomplished. In contrast, in terms of our souls, man belongs to an entirely different dimension. Man's internal world is not a world of quantity, but rather quality. The world of the persona, of the freedom of values. Now, we must seriously ask ourselves, what tools do we have to advance men towards a solution to understanding the world of values? This is exactly what we had, I will say, the contradiction that we had between the Greeks and us, the Greeks, and after them the area of philosophers throughout history, also developed an era of philosophy called ethics, morals, which behavior is proper and which is not. The problem is that they try to force research methods from an impersonal world on an area where it doesn't fit at all, and then they also try to force us, the Hebrew nation, to move to this logic. Philosophy is a doctrine of the humanities that is derived from the theories of scientific thoughts. It is based on impersonal logic, the logic of phenomena that are not entirely accessible to man, as we explained in the beginning. If man was a robot, this approach might have been working, but are we just a robot? Are we just machines? They say that Immanuel Kant, the philosophical genius to whom we, the world owns our modern mindset, maintained an exactly day schedule. Every day at 4.30 p.m. he would go for a walk at the same time every day. He would walk down the street where he lived exactly eight times. Legend has it was that his neighbors in Königsberg, the city he never left, would set their clocks based on his walks. And not this clock. There wasn't any. The clocks on the wall. But this is it. This is what a human being is. Is that how the average person lives? Can any person live such a precise and carefully measured life? Of course not. And to tell you the truth, that's a good thing. A normal person wants to get married, raise the family, can't do those things either, and live to the fullest, leading a life of meaning. A meaningful life isn't organized solely by the clock and by requirements. Often in life, people need to make ethical decisions to resolve the conflicts they face. I will sum up by saying that the tools of the intellect, what we referred to at the beginning, I will say, the mathematical language, master the impersonal elements of life. But they are not effective at all in solving matters related to morality. When scientific research proposed to provide an interpretation of personal phenomena and it uh, thereby becomes philosophy or metaphysics, what we called ethics before, it strongly contrasts the deep uh, foundations of the wisdom of the Hebrew nation, who have been claiming for almost 4,000 years, and this is why we had a big clash with them. The world is run by a creator and not by a system of laws that is void of characters. The first person who dared to clearly state that only the wisdom of the Hebrew nation is able to teach morals and the secret of men's souls 
was the psychiatrist Henry Baruch. He says like that, when the great philosopher and morality, such as Descartes, Kant, Pascal, Spinoza, discuss moral values, they are essentially saying things they learned from the Bible. Now, wouldn't it be better to learn from the source? I'm explaining it broadly in my free course on Udemy. The links are down here. If we mention the Bible and the Hebrew nation, an important note is in order. The ancient Hebrew nation, the one known as the Jewish nation today, the Israeli nation, must do more than simply clarify the subject of moral and ethical values in the world. Throughout its journey, throughout history, we claim that we must clarify the universal language of spiritual values in order to reconnect all the humanity into one unit, living peacefully one with each other. When we see wars being rigged today, the difficult treatment towards women and weak people in various places in the world, the wrongful usage of scientific tools to further violence and control others, we can say that scientific control of the world is gradually being accomplished, but our moral and ethical control as human beings over our freedom, our joy, over building our personal characters, this is something that the world is surely lacking. The house is built, but the person living in this house is ill. To whom are we going when we want to fix someone that is ill in his values? It's also interesting to note, when we're speaking about the first philosopher, the first one, 600 years before Count Era, philosopher Thales, when he had been asked, or he tried to find what was the thing that started the world and what the world is tending, he said, the water. And there are, you know, other people went with these philosophers and they said, water, earth, uh, fire, and those things. But at the same time of Thales, there was someone else from the Hebrew sages, and he also gave an explanation on what the world is standing. The world is standing, he said, on moral issues and behaving one to each other the right way, Rabbi Shimon. And this is something else I will show, I will explain more in a different video. You are invited to, be, to take part, to partner in changing this situation. Join us. Here you will learn universal principles that are relevant to all people in the world so that you may grow and influence those around you near and far. So the links are inside here. All that you need to do, press a link and start the journey with us. Bye.